Hello, welcome to this video on curve sketching. We're gonna look at a couple examples. If it gets to be too long, we'll just do one example. Uh, my name is Nakai Rimmer, thank you for watching. I hope you uh, enjoy the video. We're looking at being able to sketch a curve just from knowing pre-calculus and calculus, no calculators. We have the steps in front of us described in the last video. Let's go to an example. Our function is gonna be a fourth degree, polynomial x to the fourth minus 4x cubed plus 10. Okay, let's discuss some pre-calculus concepts. Uh, what's the domain of the function? Uh, there's nothing that you can't plug into this function. The domain is all real numbers. Are there any symmetries in this function? Well, you have a mixture of even and odd powers. So now, no y-axis symmetry, no origin symmetry. How about asymptotes? Well, polynomials don't necessarily have asymptotes. What we'll be looking for would be a denominator to look for vertical asymptotes, a limit at infinity that's a constant to look at horizontal asymptotes, and we'll be looking then to divide to divide a bottom into a, a numerator and a denominator into a numerator to get the slant asymptote. No asymptotes, no symmetry. Domain is all real numbers. So let's do the calculus now. Let's take the derivative, set it equal to zero, find these critical points or critical numbers, and then let's discuss the behavior of our function based on the signs of our derivative. Easy derivative to take, power rule. We have four comes down in front, we'll have x cubed, and then the three comes and multiplies by the negative four, you'll get negative 12x squared. 10 derivative is zero. This is your derivative. Our job to figure out then what the signs of this are. Uh, where is it equal to zero at? Where is it positive? Where is it negative? Okay, so let's first start by setting it equal to zero. With that, we want to factor out anything that the terms have in common. And so we'll factor out um, the 4 and the x squared. For the first term, we'll be left with an x, and for the second term, we'll be left with a negative 3. And now we can take these separately and set them equal to zero. And so either 4x squared is zero, meaning x is zero, or x minus 3 is zero, meaning x is 3. What do we do with these two values? Once we find these values, we go to a number line. We're going to analyze the sine, S-I-G-N, of the first derivative in the different intervals that, gets, uh, that the um, x-axis gets broken up into. Okay. And so um, zero is what we call a double root. It's a, it's a x is squared there. And so what happens with zero isn't what you would think. Just because you encounter a place where your derivative is zero, it doesn't mean that you're going to cross over and have a change in sign. Um, you know, looking at this derivative in its factored form, the 4 is positive, x squared is positive. And so this is really the sign of this is really determined by the x minus 3 term. You plug something in smaller than three, you'll get something negative. You plug something in bigger than three, you'll get something positive. And so for these reasons then, we have the sign being negative up to zero, negative in between zero and three, and then positive after three, based on how x minus three changes sign, dictating how the derivative changes signs. What are you looking for? Well, you're looking for the place where the function is decreasing at and increasing at, so you can give those intervals. You're also looking for places where you're, where you change from increasing to decreasing at those critical numbers. So zero is not officially a local min nor a local max. We go from decreasing to have a zero tangent, and then we go decreasing again. And then we switch, though, at three from decreasing to increasing, so that's going to lead to that change being a local, uh, leading to where a local minimum occurs. To get what the local minimum value is, you got to go back to the function. Plug 3 in, and we'll end up with um, 17, I think. Yep, negative 17, sorry. Um, and then we can answer the increasing, decreasing question. You can't officially say that it's decreasing from negative infinity to 0, because that would, a negative infinity to 3, because that would include 0. So you have to break it up. You're going from negative infinity to zero. Then you're going from zero to three. That's where you're decreasing at. And you'll be increasing from three to infinity. So you're going to start off decreasing. You're going to hit three, hit a local min, and you're going to increase. 
Okay. Uh, plug in zero just to know where that um, y value is, your y intercept. Um, it'll be uh, 10 when you plug a zero into that. All right, we've gotten all the information we can out of the first derivative. We have to move on to the second derivative. But go to the non factored version of it. And when it's time to take that second derivative, we'll just do the power rule again and end up with 12x squared minus 24x. Set that equal to zero. So we factor out the 12x that they have in common, and we'll be left with x minus 2. Either x is 0 or x is 2. All right, so we're looking at this number line now, and we're going to put the 0 and the 2 in there, and we're going to check the signs again. But this is, you don't have to actually, you could do test values. Pick, pick test values in the interval and plug them in. I like to be able to look at it um, as, you know, it's a polynomial who is a parabola. And I know where it's zero at. And I know whether it opens up or down because of the coefficient on the x squared is positive. I know it opens up. So if you know where it's zero at and you know it opens up, then in between those two zeros, it has to be negative. So positive on the extremes. So you can think outside the box and be able to answer the signs. And we're looking at the signs of the second derivative. They give you information about the shape of the graph. They'll tell you where your concave up at, where your concave down at and changes in concavity end up as inflection points. So you'll be concave up from negative infinity up to zero, from two to infinity, you'll be concave down in between zero and two, but not at zero or not at two. Okay, um, plug in two to be able to get the y value. So that can be a, plot, a point that we plot. Uh, plug in two to the original function, it was x fourth um, plus, uh, 4x squared uh, cubed, and then we had the, uh, what was the original function? I should have that on here, sorry. The original function was x fourth minus 4x cubed plus 10. All right, great. So we end up with uh, 16 minus 32 plus 10. We end up with a negative 6 when x is 2. We already know what's going on when x is 0. We got a 10. All right, so we got our two inflection points. Trying to find a home that doesn't cover up anything. We have our two inflection points. We know our concavity. Next, we got to look at then putting the pieces of the puzzle together. We have all the information about the signs on the first derivative. We have all the information about the signs on the second derivative. Then that should give us what we need. Let's superimpose the two number lines on top of each other. We'll have the first derivative number um, numbers, um, 0 and 3, where they're equal to 0, and the sign, the second derivative numbers, 0 and 2, and those signs. And it's the combination of sine of first derivative together with sine of second derivative that's going to tell you what your shape is. I draw this funny shape here. I should put a copyright on that. That's mine. When your second derivative is positive, you'll be concave up like a cup. But there's two sides to that. There's a decreasing side and there's an increasing side. So the combination of a decreasing concave up is the left-hand side of a happy face. While an increasing concave up is the right-hand side of a happy face. But when your second derivative is negative, then you're concave down like a frown. And that has an increasing side and a decreasing side. So when you're, when you're, decreasing and concave down at the same time, you'll be the right-hand side of a frowny face. And when you're increasing but concave down, you'll be the left-hand side. So we just gotta piece the, put these pieces together. We know that we'll, we, we're decreasing and concave up, so we're gonna look like the left-hand side of a happy face. Then we switch to decreasing and concave down, we flip to the right-hand side of a frowny face. Back to decreasing and concave up again. So back to the left hand of a happy face. And then an increasing concave up. So we'll be at the right hand side of a happy face. That's all we need. Sorry about the funny happy face and, and uh, frowny face. But anyway, um, so we plot the points. There's three of them. There's um, 2, negative 6, and 0, 10. Together with the 3 was a negative 16. And we connect those three points with these shapes. And we arrive at this graph.
quite amazing. It's been 10 minutes now. Sorry for it to go so long, but hopefully that was helpful to you. Uh, we'll do another video where we have a, a more difficult example. Uh, thanks for watching. My name is Nakai. Remember, please like and subscribe. Comment down below. Curve sketching, being able to put all the information, pre-calculus and calculus together to sketch the curve of the graph using the power of your brain and not a calculator. All right. Thanks for watching. Please comment down below. Like and subscribe. I'm happy to help you through this journey. Um, please comment if you want me to do other videos. Um, take care. I'll see you in the next video.